Tomorrow night, we play in consecutive cup games as we take on Aston Villa in this year's FA Cup fourth round. Now, I think it's safe to say that this season, cup games have seen the very best of what Chelsea can offer. I know we're still thinking about that dominant 6-1 win against Middlesbrough. We've booked our spot in this year's Carabao Cup final, but now, for me, the challenge is simply this. Don't rest on your laurels. Don't get gassed, don't get happy, and don't start feeling good about yourself because you bagged six goals against Middlesbrough. For me, you have to see these games as normal now. The key test is to maintain that ruthless streak against Aston Villa. The key test is to make sure that you're still ready to compete, to maintain that intensity level against Aston Villa because when you're at big clubs like this, it simply comes down to this. If you win more games, you have better chances of winning silverware or titles at the end of the season. It's why it's so important for us to really create a winning streak right now because I think throughout this season, we win a few games on the bounce and we lose on the bounce. There's never been a sense of consistency that we actually need right now. And I think there should be no excuse for intensity dropping off tomorrow, considering the fact that I think Pochettino may make some smart choices when it comes to rotating the team. I don't think he'll do it too heavily, but he will turn towards that tomorrow. And for players who have the opportunity to start tomorrow, you have to take your moment. You can't rest on your laurels, you know? Otherwise, there's competition in the squads and they'll take your place. I think this is the type of energy now that we must create, considering the fact that we have many players now returning back to the team. And it is going to get harder for Pochettino to pick these lineups. But regardless, though, let's move on to Aston Villa. And I have to say this, I felt like when they beat us 1-0 at home, you know, courtesy of Woody Watkins, I think circumstances favoured them. And in my opinion, there was a game before Milo Gusto and there was a game after Milo Gusto's red card sending off. And is it any surprise that Oli Watkins scored one of the few counter-attack moments that Villa created when actually, in fact, in that game, they were more threatening from set pieces. So I definitely feel like the boys could feel a bit confident going into this game thinking, we need to get one over Aston Villa. I think now that we're approaching the second part of the season, a lot of the games during the first half where we weren't getting the results that we kind of deserve. I think there's an opportunity now to kind of get revenge in that sense. And I hope we punish that Aston Villa high line because we did enough to get something in that first game. And I think they must be punished for that high line in the second game. So my friends, we get ready to compete to win the FA Cup because this season silverware is the key objective, my friends. And in today's preview, I'm going to break down things like team news, press conference key points and the predicted lineup. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. Hit that like button and don't forget to watch today's news daily video. I'm getting a lot of like positive comments. I think people liked it. And obviously I'm gonna link that in the card above and description. So my friends, let's not waste no more time. We start with team news and the main positives are Malo Gusto and Christo and Kunku now have joined first team training sessions again. Now, does that mean they might play tomorrow? Don't get gassed with that, my friends. They won't be playing, but Pochettino mentioned that there's a big possibility that if they maintain their fitness and perform well, they could be in contention against Liverpool next Wednesday. And I think that is the main priority. Outside of that, you know, it's nice to see that guys like Chalibur is still continuing training. And for the rest of them, they're still continuing their rehab programs. So that is team news out of the way. And this takes us nicely on to the key points from the press conference. And to start with things, obviously, we have to hear what Pochettino had to say after that 6-1 demolition of Borough. And as he said, you know, scoring six goals was like a matter of time. He said that now there's lots of positive data and records, you know, post-match, uh, you know, before Borough, it was all negatives, but that's football. When you score and win games, all the things that look not so good look good now. Uh, I like, <laughs> and in my opinion, I like when managers kind of like add their little mini grievances because obviously we're fans, we have a different perspective when we watch the game right compared to the managers who view things completely differently because, you know, they're actually working with these players and these squads, right? So let's hope that we can maintain our goal scoring form at this point in time. And as Poch said, you know, scoring six goals is gonna help you build confidence, right? And I like this part for what Pochettino said. He said that we need to show that every time we win the ball, every time we have the ball, that we can score. And I think, you know, there have been difficulties this season, but I think we all kind of understand and accept that it's a young team that needs to grow and needs to, you know, build together. And, you know, these little things during the first part of the season, 
they're the key things that's going to help this team improve in future seasons and you know let's hope we see better signs of progression now during the second part of the season but anyway Pochettino gave his thoughts on us reaching the Carabao Cup final now it was quite funny he mentioned uh, after the game he spoke to the honours and he said you know how do you feel about us reaching our first cup final and he was actually corrected he said no it's not the first cup final. The women's team, of course, have got into a final last season. And Poch was like, oh, so it's nice that we really take both teams seriously at this club. Uh, I think that's a really nice uh, thing to read. And as Poch said, you know, against Liverpool, it kept it very coy as he does. They're consistent. They're solid. But I think it's going to be a great final. And in my opinion, I hope we take confidence based on our opening game of the season against them in that cup final and finally get revenge because we're losing too many cup finals to Liverpool recently. Now we discuss Pochettino's thoughts on Cole Palmer's impacts. And, you know, Poch spoke about the optimism that you naturally have as a manager around any signing that you make, right? But he praised Palmer in particular for doing really well. And, you know, my main take from the press conference was the fact that Poch was surprised by Palmer's impacts because, you know, Poch mentioned that he's helping the team achieve things right now, not in the future. And I think, you know, 20 goal contributions in 20 games, 13 goals, seven assists. I think, you know, like I said, I knew this guy was ready to blow, but I did not think he'd be heating things up this much right now. So, I mean, this season is looking like it's a bit of a cold world and he is on target to maybe finally reach the fable 20 goals throughout the season mark. So let's hope he does that. Outside of that though, naturally, we have to hear about Pochettino's thoughts on potential new additions in January. Now I have released a news daily video discussing all the latest striker news. So to stay up to date with that, of course, watch today's video. But in typical fashion, Pochettino is keeping his opinions to his chest as always. Um, he knows how to play the role at big clubs and as he said, all he knows is that, you know, the owners, directors, you know, they're working hard in different areas to solve issues, blah, blah, blah. But when he was asked personally if he wants new additions, he said, in fact, that he is happy to work with what he has. He's more desperate to win titles compared to signing players. And, you know, it makes a lot of sense because if we cast our minds back to the summer, Pochettino only wanted three to four new players and we signed like double that. So he was more than happy to work with what already existed at this football club. And I'd imagine that he doesn't want any more stress now when it comes to reintegrating new players to his ideas, tactics, the squad, the team, the country, all that stuff. I think it's easier when it's during pre-season and there's more time to do that stuff. And, you know, I think with players returning back right now, the last thing we need is to sign players. And if you ask me, I agree. Personally, I don't want us to sign no one in January wait until the summer window but in my opinion i do feel like we are only looking to sell players to help with ffp to fund summer moves so as i said watch my news daily video where i go more in depth with this but my friends they're the key talking points in the press conference let's now move on to discussing my predicted lineup for our game against aston villa now i need to hold my hands up but i feel like this will be a very hard team to predict tomorrow Obviously, as the injury list is getting smaller and smaller every single week, the squad's getting bigger, there's fitter players, and again, I can see why Pochettino is happy to work with what he already has, but, you know, if I had information like, you know, who are the players who are a bit fatigued right now, or who could do with some rest, or whatever, it would be easier to predict this, but... All I know for sure is that I'm expecting Pochettino to make quite a few subs in the 60th minute. I think we will definitely prepare for the game against Liverpool. And um, I think he'll be smart in terms of how he reintroduces players who have just come back into the team and like ration their minutes out very fairly. So as you guys can see on screen, this is my predicted lineup. I've gone for Sterling, Broja, Medweki up front. In midfield, Palmer, Gallagher and Caicedo. In defence, Coral, Badia, De Sassi, Gilchrist and Petrovic in goal. Now, starting back to front, I think Petrovic speaks for himself. There's nothing to add. Of course, you know, Sanchez still needs more time to get back to the team. But in defence, I'm gone for surprise uh, inclusion. I've gone for Gilchrist and I do think it simply comes down to this. Can Thiago Silva play three games in a row? I think I think he can, but is there any need for him to do that? I think tomorrow we can afford to rotate our defence. I think Badia Shaw should come back. 
I think we have to remember with this kid that he had no preseason. He was out with injury for how many months? I think it's all about building his confidence. I don't think he has to be overhyped. We can definitely appreciate his skill set and what he brings, but I think we need to give him that patience to find his best form, like what we've done for Kai Sado and many other players. I think based on that, him playing alongside the Sassy could be interesting. I think Cole will play at left back because I don't see Pochettino risking Ben this soon, especially with Liverpool next week so there is no need to play Ben I think he might come on to get like 20 minutes though but he won't start the game and for those reasons I do think it's about time to that Gilchrist gets his first start I think he has proven that when he comes on as a sub he's alert in game he's focused he's ready he doesn't go to sleep he's pointing and directing his positioning is on point and I think it's time for Pochettino to give this kid his first proper debut and I think against Aston Villa this could be a great game to test them out. Outside of that my friends moving on to midfields again Liverpool is the key game because I, I feel like if we have any hopes of like progressing to hopefully try and get Champions League football I think it's going to require us to actually get some big name bodies next season. We have to get wins against your Liverpools, your Arsenals, your Spurs etc etc. I think that could be the key difference maker in my opinion. So for those reasons, I've gone for Caicedo to continue to play as the lone pivot. This is a 4-3-3. You know, Caicedo is showing that he can instigate attacks, mop up danger, and he's getting more confident and he's getting stronger. Outside of that, I need to see Cole Palmer again on the right hand side of the field. I just like what he does, how he links up with the team. And in my opinion, I feel like he's just like, you know, more integrated in terms of how we play. I and mean, he's a little bit deep on that right hand side. And obviously on the left, I've gone for Conor Gallagher. I think that there's no need to start Enzo Fernandez. I think with Enzo starting the last game, it's now Enzo's turn to come on as a sub. And I think Gallagher starts this game because in my opinion, against Liverpool, I'm expecting Enzo, Conor and uh, Caicedo, of course, to be that midfield three. Gallagher had a great impact coming on and the reason why his assist record is so high this season is because he does a phenomenal role in terms of winning the ball with his pressures in the final third and then releasing passes quickly in behind to find his teammates. It's worked for us quite a lot and I think it will continue tomorrow against Aston Villa but we're going to need his energy against Luis and against Kamara and obviously up front my friends I think Broji will continue to play. To be honest I was actually thinking could Pochettino play Cole Palmer up front with wingers alongside him? But I think Poch might use Palmer up front against Liverpool, in my opinion. So we can use like a strong midfield three. So for those reasons, I think Broja continues to play. I thought this game versus Borough was okay. Uh, he was in the right areas in the right time to you know, help us get the first goal. It was awarded as an own goal to Housen. And obviously he kind of just directed that ball into Enzo's path. Um, I want to see more from him. I, I feel for Broja because injuries, I mean, naturally, when you come back from a serious injury like this, you're going to need at least one year just to like fully get back to your top game. So hopefully he can continue to find more form against Villa. Very fitting because Villa are showing interest in him as well too, especially in this 4-4-2, but he could play up front alongside Watkins. So I hope to see a great game from him. And either side, Noddy has to start because Mudrick was... So poor in that first half, in my opinion, that, listen, you have one bad game, someone else comes to replace you, and Noni is scoring when he plays now, and I think he should have the opportunity to start against Villa, and if he performs well, you start him against Liverpool, and of course, Raheem Sterling, the pace in behind, the timing of his runs are going to be key, especially when it comes to using our pace in behind to exploit their high lines. So my friends, that's my 4-3-3, that's my lineup. And that's the end of the video. So I hope you guys definitely enjoyed. Hit that like button. Share your thoughts and opinions too. And on that note, I'm Nini FC. This is Blue Lines TV. I'll see you guys tomorrow on match day. Cool.